everybody. As you can see, it's not me in front of the camera today. Um, what we've got is Will Francis and he is going to do some carving and I'll ask him the old question as he goes. So um, welcome Will, don't stop what you're <laughs> doing. Um, so just to explain what's going on, Will is cutting cherry here and he is carving the outline on a cherry block and this is not the fine line block he's working on, this is a colour block. Yep, this is the last colour block in the print that I'm currently working on. So, as you can see from what Will's doing, he is carving through a sheet of paper that's been pasted down onto the cherry. So the sheet of paper has the design printed on it and that's stuck down to the cherry. And am I right in saying it's the, the bits you've coloured in with the yellow highlighter? That yeah. You yeah, everything that, that you can see is yellow is what I'll be keeping. So the knife Will's working with is that Hangito knife that we've spoken about quite a lot for cutting the outline. And you'll notice that Will's left-handed, so he's using a special uh, left-handed Hangito. So you're actually cutting and counter-cutting as you're going along, is that right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's not very necessarily very traditional. Usually, you would carve just all one side of the line, and then you would carve all the other side. So you do mm. all the lefts and then do all the rights. But to keep track of where I'm going, and for the purpose of filming, it's 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 easier to to. To, right, so to, you end up with the, the the cut line of the edge of the block and the protective counter cut yeah. done at the same yeah. time. Yeah, it's easier for me because then I can I, I just mm. can spot where I'm where I'm going. So how much of your time would you say you spend carving? Um, so in terms of the cycle of a print, I will be generally carving for about maybe a week to 10 days on the key block and then maybe a week or so to do the colour separations. So what you can see that is carved here, I did this this morning when I when I got up so that was from about eight until one-ish right i i got this done it's not too complex a block i was going to say because the line block is the absolute fine detail and it has to be exact because as the name suggests it outlines everything yeah yeah and uh generally i'll get all the blocks to sort of uh, all the color blocks to this sort of stage and then i'll do all the hammering and clearing out in one go and then do oh, right. the final finishing off. It's just less mess that I've got to clean up. Well, I haven't got to clean up every day then, I've got to clean up once. But if you're like me, it's, this is kind of the stage that I really love, is the, yeah. the kind of cutting around things rather than the clearing out stage. Yeah, so the key the key block work is, I, I, I love carving the key blocks because that's sort of the blueprint of the 
of the actual image. Mm. Um, but the colour blocks is sort of where <clears throat> you can sit back and relax for a little bit. Because you're just cutting shapes and there's mm. not there's not too much um, sort of thinking required. You can just sort of sit back and chill and just cut out all the shapes. So hopefully you can see on the camera, but you can see the, the fine gampy paper stuck down to the block there. So the lines that Will's following are actually printed lines that he's printed from the key block yeah. onto the gampy paper. Yeah. So, so different yeah. from my tracing approach. Yeah, this is the actual print of the key block that is pasted down. And then uh, I use my, my master to... Uh, delineate the areas and then just colour it in with a with a highlighter. And it sometimes fades, but you just touch it back mm. up. This would have traditionally would have been done with a vermilion pigment. That's right. In the, when I've I've seen it in books, it's always like a red colouring in yeah. of the area. Yeah. And there's a there's a good film of uh, uh, Kawasi Hasui, and uh, it shows the it shows him actually. Uh, marking out the colour areas with with his vermilion pigment oh, onto uh, onto gampy, but the gampy that was used in those days is a lot thicker, and uh, it was sometimes came under the name of Torinoco. But, so um, was that because I've seen it done where the paper is the the line block is printed onto a thicker paper, the paper is stuck down, and then the paper's rubbed. Yeah. And the, the sort of uh, back layers of the paper are rubbed off, uh, leaving a thin skin of paper. Yeah, so off. you can do this. Sometimes I will do this with this. So if there's an area that's, that's particularly um, fine, mm. I might just lick my finger and then you but can rub it back and you can see the fibres starting to come off there. And you can... The, the paper is surprisingly strong and you can really get it down to just its its last little fibres that the actual ink is on and that's generally what what I would do for a for a key block if it's really really fine or maybe around a face or something like that but it's it's important to not make the paper too wet mm -hmm. and not rub too hard because you can rub it off or you can you can st actually stretch the the fibres and then you lose the, um, the so shape of what you're carving. When I use pasted down paper, uh, which I must might do for brush drawing like I have in this series, um, rather than do that, I've just put a little bit of chameleon oil on yeah. the paper to make yeah. it translucent so that I can see what I'm doing. Yeah, and I'll, I'll, I'll do that as well. If it's a if it's a good hard piece of wood yeah. and uh, say I'm doing around a face or some hair or something like that, that's really good to... Um, it helps the wood, helps the blade glide through the wood uh, a little bit easier as well. It acts as a sort of lubricant for the uh, for the oh, steel right, to, okay. to run through the wood a little bit. But so the camellia oil is is something that you use to keep the barren yep. uh, in condition as well. Yep. So you'd maybe use a little bit of that for your bamboo barren. Yep. Uh, and also on the blades to keep rust yep. um, from forming. So it's quite a useful. Yeah, definitely. Oil. Yeah, if you yeah you definitely you can see if you were to look in in my uh, my box of of tools, the hangito is the one tool that has no signs of uh, wear or rust or anything on. The ones that I'm a bit lapse in sharpening. Like the some of the some of the gouges and things like that might have little spots on where I'm a, a little bit yeah, lazy I'm with my Yeah, I'm ashamed of my, my hanging because they're not as pristine as yours <laughs> for, for sure. But um, yeah, this really is just relaxing. Like there's not there's not a lot of thought goes into it. One very important thing is making sure you get out enough in corners and on the edges of points. So that you don't damage the actual block itself. Yeah, so it's it's so when you're clearing away you're not gonna nick that little mm. point. So for example this this very little point here, I'm gonna make it cut diagonally across it and then I'm gonna pop a little triangle out here. 
So that corner, when I come to do all my clearing out with the other chisels, that corner is now protected. There's nothing, there's no wood that needs to be cleared away that's too close to that now. It's, it's very interesting. I remember when I was learning in Japan in 2009 and I had absolutely no idea what I was doing. And we had um, the master who was teaching us to carve and we had a translator. Yeah. And he was explaining all this to us. <laughs> but the translator was from the local council and he was like, he knew business English, but okay. he didn't know printmaking English. And he was really lovely and he did the best he could, but a lot was lost in translation. Yeah. And as with several things, it took me a while to work out, you know, I'd see it being done, but I couldn't work out why I was making these random triangles. Yeah. And then yeah. after a while, the penny drops, and you think, "Oh, that's why he wanted this." And that's generally as well. If you if you if you see people like Adachi or Ukiyo Shimoi or uh, Takahashi Kobo or anyone like that on Instagram, any of the the, the Japanese printmaking uh, studios that have their own page, they quite often post photos of the carving process. Mm. And quite often you'll see a, an entire block carved, but there's no waistline's been been cut. It's just a series of lines cut into the wood with a triangle at the end, like oh, that. Right. And the whole block's done like that because the traditional way is that you cut all the lines. You wouldn't do any of your waist cutbacks. You do all the all the little triangles popped out, and then you do all of that. That'd be the second stage. Oh, would be taking right. all of your waistlines out from there. So it's quite often that you see you see pictures. But like it's that. interesting, isn't it? Because the the carving process is um, very much a skill that's taught in a particular way, Definitely. and there's like a, an order to do it and yeah. um, and how that's done. Yeah, and I'm by by no means um, should anyone think that the way I'm doing it is the traditional uh, taught method because I'm, I'm self-taught and I've only learned from reading books and watching videos and things like that so I, I have a reasonable understanding of how it's done um, I, but I didn't receive an apprenticeship which mm. taught me the ins and outs like you can see I'm turning the block now which is not something as much as I can, I'll try and keep the block in one place, but I'm not dexterous or skilled enough to, to keep a block in, in one place. And there's also any any uh, master carver that would that would happen upon this video could spot any manner of of things that I'm doing incorrectly. Yeah, but you've, got, you've got a lifetime to learn this. Right? Exactly. You're so young yet <laughs> in terms of Japanese carving. You've got like but, um, decades to go. Yeah, there's there's... Small techniques. There's there's a lot that I have to learn, in, especially in terms of there's ways to carve that allow your clearing out process to become a lot easier. Mm. Um, and I know there is ways because there's things that I struggle with that I sit there and think there must be an easier way for that. Mm. And as with anything, if it feels like there's an easier way to do it, there's most likely is an easier way to do it. Um, so in terms of learning at this yeah. level so we're, we're not talking like the kind of courses I teach or anything mm. like that but at the, the real sort of craftsman end of learning the Japanese wood blog is it possible to learn? Yes there's a, there's uh, a guy I know or I speak to uh, occasionally on Instagram called Taron Casey who is actually I think he's British He's out in Tokyo now learning with uh, Asuka-san, who's regarded as probably the best living carver left. Um, and he's actually being taken on as an apprentice with him. So there is avenues in which you can do that. But that's um, a real commitment, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, that's like seven years. Yeah, it, it requires you to... Move to Japan to commit your your Speak entire Japanese. life, yeah, and to to work for that person for the rest of your life. Um, that's something that maybe if I was sixteen or seventeen or whatever, coming out of of 
secondary school I, I maybe would have thought about if that was then, but I don't quite have that luxury anymore, being mm. being the wrong side of 30. and Yeah, and uh, Adachi do run uh, a foundation in which... Oh, they, do they? Yeah, they, I think each year, I'm not sure... What the what the status of it is currently, but they run a foundation where they are looking for the next uh, generation to to mm. to at least try and take part and see how they feel. I'm not sure what places there are for international um, applicants, but mm. there there is some scope for it. Uh, it's certainly not out of the question that you could go and do that. Obviously, a, a level of Japanese language is required, and that's the biggest. That is by far the biggest hurdle that you'll come across in if you wanted to go and train traditionally and make that a career path is is the language. Mm. But that's not to say that you have to do that because you don't. You can. No. There's there's your videos. There's <laughs> your streams. There's David Bull's videos and streams. There's yeah. There's a lot of there's a lot of information out there, and there are residences like uh, MI Lab that yeah. I, I've studied with, and they're very good, and they are for English language speakers, yeah. and they offer translation, and um, you know that's where I started, yeah. and. They certainly set me on the path to to greatness. To, <laughs> well, I was going to say to to working with Japanese woodblock was what I was going to say. Yeah. But um, there are various routes. But if you can get to ja- to Japan to study in some way, it's pretty amazing, isn't it? It's, yeah. It's very it, different. It is, and it's it's the Japanese people are. So, in my experience, are so excited to see a Westerner or a foreigner taking pleasure in doing this and taking an interest in it. That's it, a, that's a really good point. Actually, I would say the same. It's the attitude is very much of terrific enthusiasm that you are yeah, there's interested. No, there's no, they're not trying to hide it. Yeah. They're not trying to keep secrets. It's all about. There's no gatekeeping yeah. to it. It's yeah. it's just they're excited that you're showing an interest in in something that is part of their 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 heritage and and their culture, um, which is really great. I was very apprehensive that that it might, might be misconstrued as a cultural appropriation. Me trying mm. to work in in a a foreign like art form and and calling it my job and stuff, and that people would be offended by it because I'm not trained or things like that but that's never once been the case it's interesting isn't it because i've come in for stick in the uk yeah for cultural it appropriate. More, yeah more exactly more it's never a japanese person that is giving you a hard no. time no. which i think is quite interesting yeah. there is this kind of um belief somehow yeah. that japanese woodblock is a sacred thing and you can't do it but yeah. actually it's a printmaking process it is and just making images the same as anything same else. as lino cut yeah. you know you wouldn't dream of saying to someone well you can't do lino cut because it's culturally appropriating it i think i've finished fantastic i have finished well thank you will that's that's been terrific so you can see now um that will's done his outline cuts for that color block yeah so the next stage will be going in with a, a thin maybe seven mil gouge and just clearing Bit of waste. So would you start with the little delicate bits and work towards the big areas? So yeah, I'll just I'll just hammer along the outline, mm. maybe leaving, I'll maybe leave like maybe this much mm. coming up around the edge, mm. just to protect those edges, and then anywhere that my large gouges can't get in, like in here, around here. I'll so clear when all you that use out. gouges, do you use them with a hammer or do you use? Yeah, them so I use them with a hammer. Generally, so differently from me, I yeah, would be yeah. using. Yeah, yeah. So cherry, you can't really push a gouge through it too no. too deep. Um, I find with cherry blocks, generally, so obviously with any wood, you have two ways that you can go up and down the grain or you can go across the grain 
generally with these cherry blocks, if you go the wrong way on the grain, it's going to dig and split and stuff. So you, mm. you, you want to test an area in in here, in a, in a waste bit, not too close to it, to check that you've got the right grain direction where you're going. Um, but yeah, it's just a lot of hammering and clearing out the wood. That's the, that's the fun, noisy bit where you get to just <laughs> smash away at the bit of wood. And then it's just clearing up to the edges. Quite simple, quite... Nice and calm. Fantastic. Well, thank you very much, Will, for showing us that. No problem. And thank you, everybody, for watching, and I hope you'll join us again.